Hello buddy, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at another open source scam. This is a fake info stealer, which is ironic, because it ships a real info stealer, but you're not going to be using it if you're the scammer. So, this was mentioned uh, by one of our analysts in the Discord, they found this, and to me this looks pretty sophisticated, but we'll go through that in a second. So first of all, uh, what is the trick here? Well, we can see the... Let's see what we've got here. So we've got obfuscation.py. Well, they're not lying about that. And this is actually borrowed, I think, from Blank Grabber. No. Okay. Uh, nope. Well, it is obfuscated. Ah. <sighs> okay. Do the other scripts have it as well? Every single script has it. Upx.py. Why on earth would you need upx? x.py are you so inept as a skid that you actually don't know how to use upx that's embarrassing so this is where the download is coming from and i'll check that those are the same in a second but now let's fire up the vm and see what we're going to be dealing with so now that we're in windows we can download this and we can open zip and learn a bit more about what we're dealing with but first of all let's make this a bit more readable so what we do is uh, we see this semicolon here, and we delete everything in front of it. And then we can create a new line for each semicolon. Now, this one is just one big base64 file. Now, the Fernet library, while being entirely legitimate, has evidently become a popular choice uh, for this malware campaign. Uh, the other, uh, one of the other fake open source projects also used this as an obfuscation technique. So, once we get through this, uh, we get another exec to... Deezer Benny dot RU slash paste repo Luna grabber. Okay. Now we're just gonna open this in a browser. Now of course we can't do that because anti-analysis. Don't forget. The reason they block anything other than a default Python requests is so you can't easily get it. Now uh, we have what is probably the final uh, phase. Now, interestingly, and this could indicate that this is some sort of packaged malware that's used elsewhere, we get another Fernet install, even though we already installed it. And then content is, and then this is going to be exact. And now we get stage six. And what does stage 6 do? Well, stage 6 does quite a few things. So, we've got Win32Crypt, which is to enable the info stealer to steal all of our data. Ruppy storage. So, all of our information is going to be copied. These are all different crypto wallets, if you're wondering why they have these extensions, keywords. Oh! So, it's even going to go for files if they contain the right names. Your Discord. That's how you decrypt data. That's how you beat uh, Windows security. And then we post this onto slash delivery. Now, if we wanted to be a bit cheeky, uh, we, we could we could uh, send some presents. So we, we, we could just send some random noise over there. Not that I would ever encourage anyone to do anything like that because it would be mean. But if we wanted to be a bit mean-spirited, we could do that. So now uh, the other remaining payload is the HVNC, which from what I have been told is an encrypted c sharp binary. Let's also see what... Okay, so these are just the different processes it injects because you've got to kill it before you can inject it. That makes sense. Another interesting potential footprint of purchased malware is everywhere else we're using the requests library, and here we're using the URL lib.request. I can't think of a good reason why you would alternate between them. Other than this uses a custom header as a form of authentication, but there are ways around that. Uh, you can do that with the other library, but okay. Unable to get issuer certificate. While that's running, uh, let's see what we can find about this HVNC. So, we download the HVNC, and we put it in the startup path, which is... Okay, so it actually just injects it right into there. Now this is just going to be a Python file that actually enables it. Okay, so this is the patch for that. This is an entirely trojanized version, so I am actually going to run this again with the Exodus malware.asl, just so that if we do want to do anything with that, we can. Okay, and then this uh, is once again going to be encrypted 
with Fernet. Wait a sec, what? This, this wouldn't even work. Because you'd have to somehow execute uh, the sub part. Okay, well, let's replace that with a print and just see if it does have some execution method I missed. No, it doesn't. But now it should do what we were expecting it to. Let's just make sure there's no more execs in here. That would be an utterly <laughs> embarrassing mistake. And this is the decrypted script. And this is our batch file. This checks if we have administrator, and then it will try and put up a UAC prompt. And then we engage in the getting rid of Windows Defender, because shockingly, it never fails to amaze me how easy it is to bypass Windows Defender. And then we download the download the exe and then there's also a minor now these are not being although i think it does get a fake name can't download it that way i'm just going to quickly run a downloader because that is the exe we're ultimately interested in we don't need any of the rest of this now we've finally got an exe that we can upload on virus total and we'll just see what it has to say but of course in the real world we would now be deep enough that defender has actually been removed and in fact, this is pretty much universally detected. Now, it's also getting some packed hits. So let's try out Detect It Easy and see what it has to say. So we're getting a packer detection, but no indication of which packer. So the tool that we use for this kind of thing is called D4. Dot. So it does say it's done some things. So now the only thing we can do is open it in DNSpy and see how good or bad it looks. Here we see a decryption runtime, so let's let's scroll down and see what we can do. Of course, given this is .NET, debugging this isn't going to be terribly difficult. Okay, so we're having a bit of trouble debugging that. So for a quick look, we can try just loading this onto a sandbox. So it runs a CMD that starts itself, and once again, it kills the execution policy, and it runs a PowerShell with base64, and we can find out what that does. Okay, that deals with Defender again, and now we end up with the data.exe that is task scheduled, and now we've gotten a dump, we can get a dump of the actual process, and we can see both Pure Miner and ZG Rat have been detected. And it is connecting to a non standard port, which is probably where it's actually being controlled. This is coming from this domain, and this is going to be the real uh, command and control server. And we can actually look and see if there's anything human re. Oh, that does look. Uh, no, I was wrong. I thought that was going to be JSON. It's probably encrypted somehow. But, of course, now that we have the binary, uh, we can learn some more. And this has .NET Reactor on it. And, of course, data.exe, which is another executable file, is pro probably not legitimate. Let's see what VirusTotal makes of it. Never seen this file before. Okay, well, we can fix that. That's interesting. So it actually seems to be the same file. Oh, it's just unseen because I, I partially unpacked it. And then this, reg services, is actually the payload. Which is reflected after being decrypted. So that's how all this works. That's going to be all for this for now. I hope this video is interesting. Uh, so what does this do? Well, it installs a rat... And it will mine crypto with your computer, and it steals all your information, so it's about as bad as it can get. So the lesson here is, don't be downloading hack tools off of random websites. Honestly, don't be downloading hack tools anywhere. Just don't be a cyber criminal. Problem solved. That's all for now. Bye.